So back to Eric Adams. He is now ready to go here uh, via Skype this morning. So more than two and a half million people, we understand, live in Brooklyn. Residents there obviously have been hit hard during this health crisis. 55 deaths have been reported in one nursing home. Good morning to you, Borough President. Thank you for joining us right now. The loss inside nursing homes has been insurmountable here. Tell me what's being done right now to protect those in the nursing homes moving forward. And was this a slow roll rollout to make sure these people were safe to begin with? Uh, I, I believe so, and um, it's unfortunate that when you look at part of the problem is staffing, as well as just some of the basic um, things that we emphasized on. We were trying to address the issue in our hospitals, uh, but in reality, we had to address everywhere we had those vulnerable citizens, and nursing homes really a place where we had a lot of vulnerable citizens, a lack of testing, a lack of PPEs, and we're really seeing the results of them now, which I think the man, the governor is trying to right size the problem, but we need to ensure they get staffing and also use uh, telecommunication devices so loved ones can actually right. find, out, find out what is happening to their, their, their family members. So what exactly is happening inside the Cobble, nursing, uh, Cobble Hill nursing facility? We understand that is one that is really seeing some problems right now. What are you doing to help them out? Of 55 deaths, as was reported, uh, probably a little more once we start ad addressing or adjusting the numbers. Uh, we are trying to get them as much research. I'm going to hold a call with all of my nursing home facilities in Brooklyn and find out what services we need from the state and from the city uh, to come in. The Department of Health uh, on the state level, they are the overseeing body of the nursing homes, and we're going to communicate with them and see how do we get more resources to them on the ground. So I want to specifically talk about testing, right? You are now pushing for more testing within these facilities, within these nursing homes. Why do you think that is so important? And again, you know, I, I know it's not your, you're not to blame here, but why was the rollout in testing in low-income communities and nursing homes, why was it such a slow rollout? It's so true. And uh, this is not, you know, we're not late to the party on this. Uh, for the last uh, three, three weeks, um, we have been emphasizing the importance, I believe, of testing. I think the City Department of Health moved in the wrong direction of only testing individuals who were admitted to hospitals. Uh, I think that we under-tested in many communities. We did not have testing centers uh, in Queens and Brooklyn, which were uh, both places that were in considered NYCHA. the center of the epidemic. In NYCHA, um, three weeks ago, I started handing out masks in NYCHA. Uh, because I realized that these were places where there were pre-existing conditions. I'm happy the governor is, is helping. I'm bringing in more masks there. We need to continue to do so. And all essential employees uh, should receive some form of face covering. This is what's being done already in Newark, and it's being done also in parts of Connecticut. Uh, we should not be late to understanding that we have to ensure that all of our essential employees and residents have a mask. It should be free. Absolutely. You know, and you're speaking of those masks. So as we move towards what's looking like mandatory masks as you walk outside, right? We had Senator Cory Booker on our air yesterday who is raising some concerns that there may be a need now for anti-bias police training to keep black men and women from being targeted or profiled because they're out there wearing a mask. He was saying that he heard about some cases in New Jersey. Why don't you get your take over in Brooklyn? I held a meeting on Sunday with approximately 175 uh, African-American males and uh, Hispanic male leaders, and that was part of the conversation. They raised concerns. And what I asked them to do, uh, to reach out and let's be part of the ground game of communicating and let young men know exactly um, how to feel safe. But they, they, the, the desire of public safety uh, must be matched with health safety, also public health. And so we don't want them to say we're not going to wear masks because we're afraid of police interaction. Uh, we communicated. I have two great police um, borough commanders here, and I shared that concern, and they're yeah. getting it down to their troops. Uh, we need them to wear masks. And I want to talk food insecurity. Obviously, we've been reporting it's such a big problem here, right? Residents are standing in really long lines with long wait times for little to no food. So are there ways, are you seeing ways to beef up distribution here to help those residents? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, this is so important, Dan, because not only are we talking about uh, calor caloric consumption of making sure people have full stomachs, 
but the nutrition. Remember, of uh, the cause of those who are trans who are actually dying from the virus, have ninety four percent of them have pre existing conditions. We have to change the food we're yeah. giving people, particularly from the city. And so we have a great partnership here in Brooklyn with Campaign Against Hunger. She served over a million meals in four weeks. And we need to get more food on the ground. Many of these seniors who are in senior centers, um, after the call was to close these centers in adult daycare centers, uh, we didn't follow that up to make sure they got home food delivery. And we have been volunteering with groups to do so. But we need more food on the ground. Understood. And you've actually been out there handing out meals as well. Borough President, if anybody knows about nutrition, it's you, my friend. You've taught me a lot about being healthy over the years. I thank you for your time this morning and all your efforts out there. Stay safe to you, okay? Thank you.